In this video, I'm going to show you editing MIDI drums in Reaper. So the project setup here, we've already recorded a drum part and a piano part, both recorded as MIDI. And if we double click the item on the piano track, it opens up to the MIDI editor, which looks like this. If we look on the left, this is known as the piano roll or the piano roll editing mode, which makes sense for piano. As we see the length of our notes along with the notes that are being played on our piano. Let's hear it. Like I said, it makes sense to edit this way for instruments with pitch, like a piano. But for drums, we probably want to do it differently. So if we close this and open up the recording on the drum track by double clicking, we can see it looks very much the same with the piano roll over on the left and the length of our notes, which doesn't make much sense for MIDI drum notes, as drum notes don't have a length. They either play or they don't play. We don't really need to see the pitch of the notes, as again, drum notes aren't pitched. So using a piano to show what note we're triggering doesn't make as much sense. So instead, we can switch what we see on our drum tracks. Let's take a look. If we right click up here and scroll down to view, we could change it from piano roll to name notes, event list, or musical notation. For drums, I would choose name notes. And if we choose it, now it looks like this over here. Now, depending on what drum software we're using, we might see the names of our drum samples over here. In this case, we're not, but we can still name them manually. If I go over here to my kick, we can right double click to change the name of this note, which is a kick. And do the same with the others. There's a snare. I'll name it snare one, because we have a few more. Name it snare two and snare three. Over here, we have the ride, our crash, and the hi-hat. Now we could also tell the order of our notes may not be the order we want to use, but luckily we could change that in this editor as well. Let's move the snare, control on the PC, command on the Mac, and just drag it. Do the same with snare three, Let's bring down the hi-hat to around here and the ride and our crash. Now our notes are in the order we prefer. And of course, if you have more notes, you can still manually rename them the same way. Now we can zoom in closer to see them better. but we're still seeing some rows we're not using. These ones over here and over here. We could right click up here, go to view and go down here to show hide note rows and hide unused and unnamed note rows. So this will hide every row we're not using that doesn't have a name. Choose it and now it looks like this. Let's zoom in again and now we can see it even clearer as we're just seeing the notes we're using. Our kick, snare, hi-hat, ride, and crash. So again, this makes more sense when editing drums. Now, because we named each note manually, we should save it to use it in the future. Of course, you could skip this step if your software automatically names your rows. We could right-click up here, Go to File, go to Note Names, and save note names to a file. I already created a folder for this, so I'll name it and save it, and now it's saved. So if we clear it, go to File, go to Note Names, and clear the names. You can then load it again, go to File, Note Names, 
load and it shows up right here, or we can navigate it on our hard drive from here. Let's choose this. And it automatically imports the note names we entered manually. Again, more useful for MIDI drums. Now, as I mentioned before, as we're seeing these notes, we're also seeing the length of the notes, which for drums, we don't need. So we could change that by right clicking up here, go to view and choose on the piano roll notes. Instead of rectangles, we could choose triangles or diamonds. Or we could do it in the toolbar. Go up here. This is a rectangle. This is a triangle, which looks like this. And this is a diamond, which looks like this. Let's zoom in so you can see this easier. Now each note is represented by a diamond or a triangle, depending on what you prefer. I personally prefer the triangle as the start of the note is based on the start of the trigger. With diamond, it's based on the middle of the diamond. So right over here is the attack of the note, not over here or here. So you could choose either one you prefer. I kind of like the triangles, as the note starts right here for each MIDI note. And of course, in this window, we could draw our notes by clicking and dragging to create notes. We could delete them by double clicking and draw as many as we need. Want a snare? Drop it in. One here and here and move them around. And again, double clicking to delete those notes. We could also quantize the performance by going up here to this toolbar button, which opens up this dialog. We could do it manually or based on the grid. Choose all notes and choose the grid we want to use. Sixteenths, eighths, and so on. But I'm going to leave it as is. Now, if we look over here on the notes, there's a little line we can grab to adjust the velocity of our hits. So if I grab this one right here, change the velocity of the notes. And we can see it also down over here at the same time. So you can adjust the velocities up here or down here, whichever you prefer. But if you don't want to see these lines, which are on by default, we could right click, go to view, choose piano, roll notes, and turn off velocity handles on notes. And then we don't see it on the notes. We can still adjust them down here. But if we leave it on, which it is by default, we could also see the numbers of the velocity. And we can see the velocity number right there. Adjust them and see the number in real time. But that's off by default. But we could also see the name of the notes on the notes. Just right click, go to piano roll notes, and choose show note names on the notes. Which is really helpful to see the note names over here instead of having to line them up over here. See a ride, a hi hat, snare one, and kick. We can see them right on the notes. But this is off by default, so you need to turn it on if you want it. And we can also change the color of our notes. By default, these are based on the velocity of the notes, which makes more sense for a piano. The harder we hit them, it changes color. But for drums, I prefer a different option. Just right click, go to view, and choose color notes by. And we can change it from velocity, which is the default, to channel or pitch, or a few other options. I prefer for drums to use pitch. This way, we get a different color for each note we use. So you can clearly see, let's zoom out, all the notes are the same color by sample. The hi-hat, snare, and kick are all different colors. Again, it's set by default to velocity, but we can change it to pitch very easily. Now, because of the length of this video, I've decided to cut it into two parts. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can switch from the default, which is best for pianos and other pitched instruments, to what we set up just now for drums, using custom actions and adding them to the toolbar as toolbar buttons up here. So that's pretty much it. That's editing MIDI drums in Reaper. I hope you learned something. 
Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.